Drafting with Newmont. Hello, hello, my friends. It is time for a flashback draft. Modern Horizons. Throne of Eldraine, a little bit uh, old by now, but uh, I'll probably end up doing one more Throne of Eldraine draft for uh, this YouTube channel. But for now, Modern Horizons is up. Um, and with Magic Online, you know, they always bring back these these fun uh, formats. Uh, Modern Horizons isn't up for the next day or two. Uh, it was up for a week. Tomorrow is going to be Vintage Masters. And then uh, we always have like Holiday Cube and whatnot um, at this time of year as well. Anyways, let's just jump right into this pack. Uh, I think in Modern Horizons, the number one deck and uh, the deck that you kind of should be forcing is the Ninja's deck. I think, especially when it's open, the deck is just nigh unbeatable. Uh, and so I'm going to first pick a blue-black card here. Ingenious Infiltrator is just insane, especially in conjunction uh, with, like, Changeling Outcast. The only other good card here that I would consider taking is, like, the Pyrophobia. But this is just a very easy Infiltrator. And here we have exactly what I was talking about. Um, now, you might not think this is a good pickup, but the Fairy deck... Sorry, not the Fairy deck. The Ninja deck, you want to take these Fairy Seers and Changeling Outcasts very, very high. Uh, I think the Fairy Seer is actually a little bit better than the Changeling Outcast, even though the Outcast is a ninja for the Infiltrator combo. The Fairy Seer is just so good when you're able to continuously rebuy it with Ninjutsu, um, keep setting up your draws. This is a great pickup and a card I'm very happy to take second pick. I think beyond ninjas, uh, there are plenty of other good archetypes in this format, of course, but like I said, I think ninjas is the best. Uh, and which is why I'm going to kind of try to force it here, even though we had a very good start for it. Um, otherwise, you have something like Spring Bloom Druid, um, Winding Way, maybe, but Fairy Seer or Changeling Outcast are just the easy pickups here for me. And follow that up with Moonblade Shinobi. This is the uh, the ninja that you're really looking for, the common ninja that you really want, um, as it just kind of enables itself in a sense, right? The fact that whenever it deals damage, you get a 1-1 flyer. Well, then that 1-1 flyer can probably ninjutsu in another turn. Stuff like that makes it very, very good. And if you can slap like a smoke shroud on the shinobi, then you're just in great business. So uh, very easy pickup here for me. The only card I'm really losing out on is a string of disappearances, but Moonblade is perfect. Okay, not a great pack here for us now. Uh, we have a few fine options like Rank Officer, Wind Caller, Aven, Wart Eye, Witch, but none of the cards uh, I really want to be taking at this point in the draft. Best card here being Pyrophobia, and then you have some good green cards like Mother Bear and Cross and Tusker. But uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy to take a Wind Caller, Aven, even though it's not like super ideal to take it this early. It still enables your uh, ninjas that you want to get in to, to get in with flying. Also, it cycles. And can always just be a 4-3 later on by itself. So, not a bad pickup. But, ideally you end up with something like 3 or 4. At least 3, I'll say. At least 3 1-drops to really enable. Um, ooh, now here's a really close pick. I think Cordial Vampire is supremely um, underrated, even. Uh, it is a good card. However, we have Gluttonous Slug and a Smoke Shroud here. So I think my first pick in this pack is the Slug, second pick Shroud, and then third pick Baron Moore. Smoke Shroud, I'm always looking out for maybe one or two of these, um, but I think the Slug is just too important. You really need these enablers, and Slug does so much work. Even just as an 0-3 Menace, a lot of the times you can play this on turn two, and because of the Menace, you just get to attack in. Your opponent can't block because they might have one creature, but not two, and then you get to uh, Ninjutsu in something else. So, Awesome start. Hmm. Six pick, we have an option. I think it's pretty easy to get Ninja of the New Moon. Um, so I think String of Disappearances here to help force in the, the Ninjas is a better pickup. But that being said, I do like having this card. When the first uh, when the format first rolled around, I did not care for this card, but I've become in or I've come uh, around to the idea that, you know, it's just good. Right? Especially with all of these evasive creatures, just being able to kind of like flash it in, in a sense. And get in for six is super nice, especially if you can, you know, pair it with Smoke Shroud or any other way to to get it in multiple times. This is an amazing sign. Seventh pick to file. This is one of the best commons in the set, um, for sure. Speaking of best commons in the set, we also have Irregular Cohort and Magmatic Sinkhole. So this pack must have been stacked because we have a lot of good cards here. But 
Defile's perfect. Cheap interaction is what we were looking for. Ooh. And now an 8th pick Azra Smoke Shaper, another ninjutsu creature that can just do so many busted things. Um, this one especially, it lets you like just right-click attack all with all of your creatures. Your opponent makes like one or two profitable blocks or like trade blocks, and you just ninjutsu this in and blow them the hell out. So, great pick up here. Did get a Ninja of the New Moon as well on the wheel. And now, I think this pack has gone about as perfectly as we could have hoped for. Um... Like, Smoke Shroud is the only card that could potentially wheel that would really surprise me. Or at least would really, you know, solidify this deck. Uh, as we have Venomous Changeling and a Phantom Ninja here. I'm actually not huge on Phantom Ninja. I think Venomous Changeling is better for this deck. A lot of the time, this is just as unblockable as a Phantom Ninja. And I think it has better synergy and just um, easier to cast, so... Nice, a second string of disappearances is perfect. Yeah, if we could, again, just get that smoke shroud, I think pack one would have been uh, the, the the perfects. Take the rank officer here over Wart I Witch. This is good at uh, getting some last uh, few points of poke damage in, as well as being able to potentially double evolve the slug. Okay, nothing there. So it looks like we didn't get the smoke shroud back, but I mean, I cannot be upset. Like, all 12 of these cards here... Are cards that I will play so getting 12 playables in the first pack means we have a little bit of leeway to uh, to uh, you know really take the cards that we want over the cards that we need let's see okay pack two incoming crypt ruts is amazing don't get me wrong but I think the slug is just what this deck wants more um, yeah slug is amazing Let's see, Lava Dart, Igneous Elemental, Splicer Skill, but happy to take the Slug over the Crypt Rats. Still looking for a few more 1-drops. Only picked up one in the first pack. Factor Fiction, Lesser Masticore, or another Slug here, the picks. Three Slugs is pretty good. Although it's kind of hard to pass up a Factor Fiction, I feel like. Given the fact that I already have two slugs, I think I'm going to go with the uh, fact here. But I wouldn't be surprised if um, if taking just a third slug would have been best. Throat Seeker is fine. It's a it's a good way to level up the slugs. Um, you can also get in for, you know, some decent life gain with ninjutsu creatures. So fine, not exciting. Would much rather just have like another shinobi. Okay, again, not really getting much here. Wart I Witch is playable, but not a card I'm hoping to run. Uh, we'll go ahead and just take it for sideboard purposes. <clears throat> I'm expecting to get a really strong pack three then. Pack one was really good for us. Pack two looks like um, we might be cutting, getting cut off a little bit, but then pack three should be really good again. Let's take the Smoke Shroud now. Uh, I really do like Phantasmal Form in this deck as well, but I think it's more important to just get the first Smoke Shroud, plus the Phantasmal Forms tend to go later, so... Shroud it up here. But yeah, looking nice so far. Forcing is not necessarily the best option. Um... But I think in this format, if available to you, ninjas are the way to go. And I've had an absurd win rate with uh, with ninjas this time around. So let's take the Azra Smoke Shaper here. And at this point, I unless I see something absurdly bomby like a Yawgmoth, I just have to take any one drop I see. We could still get uh, a one drop here in the next two picks. I think that was pick six. So, another Fairy Seer, or Changeling Outcast, or, you know, even even something like a Cabal Therapist or whatever would be okay. As we get a Blink Pack here, so let's just take the Snow-Covered Island. There might be some utility with that. Maybe I get like a Blizzard Strix or something and want to play it. 
Okay, one more pack that we haven't seen. Pick eight here of the second pack. So pack three, we're looking for more one drops. I like a mob. Another defile would be okay. But I do have the double string of disappearances, so I already have some ways to push through. Like, I think bounce effects in the ninja deck are often just as good as removal spells especially because of the cost. Come on, pick eight. Fairy Seer. Pick eight, change the outcast. Another Ninja of the New Moon. I might end up playing two of those. Um, so, we'll take it. Might. I tend to err on the side of uh, not having too many Ninjas of the New Moon, especially if I don't have um, a ton of enablers, but it is a very powerful card for sure. Let's see, we have Fairy Seer, two Slugs. Wow, actually, I really need to pick up even just a two-drop now. Another Ward I Wedge. I'm just going to hate, hate on an Igneous Elemental. Yeah, I guess I didn't realize how short on one and two drops I was. Wow! Wheeling the Slug there was huge, though. Nice. Another good early creature that can get through. Let's see, we have two Smoke Shapers, Infiltrator, Shinobi, and the Ninja of the New Moon. Take a charm for the sideboard. Not huge on charm. Obviously, it's no GTA itself, but this is a good sideboard card versus like opposing um, opposing ninja decks or even say like goblin decks or whatever. Okay, last few pickups here. So pack two definitely didn't go as well as the first pack, but we still have one more pack to uh, to solidify our game plan. Ransack is filler. I don't mind having a potential Silumgar Scavenger, though. Don't think I'll be playing two, but... Alright, so... Pack three, let's go! Some more Defiles, some Fairy Seers, some Changeling Outcasts, some Shinobis. Prismatic Vista... Probably just have to take that card. Uh, <laughs> that's like 15 or 20 tickets, which basically pays for the draft. So kind of hard to not take it there. Now, let's say if this was just some random rare that didn't do anything in our deck, I would certainly take the Watcher for tomorrow, as this card is just very good. But hard to pass up a Prismatic Vista. And it's not like it's not going to go in the deck. It definitely is. I just think the creature there might have been a little bit better. Okay, pick number two. Not getting the one drops we need here. Could take another rank officer. Again, with three slugs, rank officer double levels, double evolves. So that is quite good. I think I'm just going to go with the scour here, though. Uh, we saw a lot of rank officers wheel last pack, so... Don't think I need to take them super early here. Because this is how our mana curve looks if we don't have the enablers for the ninjutsu. And now you can see how much more awkward it gets. Okay, Defile or Carrion Feeder. See, this is actually kind of close. I think if this was a Fairy Seer or a Changeling Outcast... I 100% would take it, but given that this is a little bit worse, well, not a little bit, a lot worse as an enabler, I think I'm just supposed to go with the solid removal spell here in the form of the, uh, form of the Defile. There it is, perfect. There's a Fairy Seer. God, I'm passing another Watcher for Tomorrow. It feels so weird, like, Watcher for Tomorrow is a better magic card, um, but that being said, Fairy Seer is just so much better in this deck, so easy pickup. 
Choking Tethers, we'll take that over Blizzard Strix or String of Disappearances number three. It's another good way of pushing in through damage. Okay, let's take the Eye Kite here now. It's another fine enabler. Late sinkhole going around, but that's fine. This is pick number six, so still, still a few more chances to get one more one drop would be amazing, but Eye Kite's fine. Take a second wind caller Aven here, although it looks like we might not even end up playing it for now. This is pick seven, so one more chance after this to get a one drop. How good is this eye kite? One cycle, two, three, four. Although this doesn't really count. Three. Yeah, I kite not great here. Another uh, Blizzard Strix, interesting. I don't think we're playing that. I suppose I'll take it though and see if we can wheel some like snow covered islands and snow covered swamps. But I don't think this fits the deck. There's another Phantasmal, or rather, there's another Rank Officer on the wheel, plus the Phantasmal form. I think here it might be better... Oh, God, it's, it's actually really close. I've been spouting how good the Rank Officer is with Gluttonous Slug, and I do have three, but form is also very, very good with the Slug, because the Evolve are 1-1 one, one counters, and so if you have, like, a 2-5 Slug and you use Phantasmal form, it becomes a 5-power Flyer with Menace. I think I'm going to take the form here. That's close, though. Oh, got a second rank officer anyways. <laughs> and a third rank officer. Okay, well, they ended up all wheeling, so. Wheeled the string as well, but I don't think we need that. I already have another ninja in the side, so let's take the return from extinction. Okay, so, like, one one, one drop short of uh, what I wanted, but I think this deck ended up very good. Debating whether or not I want to run the second rank officer for these slugs. I probably do. I can probably cut Aven here as well. So we have six creatures that come down on turn one or two to enable all of the ninjutsu shenanigans. Two defiles, two strings, and a choking tethers. Um, 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 um. Debating if I want to make any any changes here. Cards I'm considering playing. I think these are the possibles here. Oh, rather, not the string. I guess I already have two. So these are the possibilities here. One of these three for a different card. I guess it's probably got to be Rank Officer. Again, with three slug, the Rank Officers are so good. Not sure what I would be cutting, though. Maybe two String of Disappearances is unnecessary. That's probably fine. All right, I'm going to submit it like this. And we'll go 8-8. Eight, eight. Looks good. Easily a 2-1 deck. Hopefully a 3-0. Stay tuned. Here's round one of this Modern Horizons draft. We are on the draw and missing one island. Snap keep if we have an island, though, because turn one fairy here is the best thing you can be doing in this deck. But go ahead and ship it down to six. And a a fine six. Uh, I'm not going to go down to five here. The only issue with this hand is that I don't have any creature on turn one or two or even three to enable the Shinobi, um, or rather the, the Ninjutsu, but kind of hard to go down any further. So let's gonna, 
Or we're gonna just ship the rank officer away and hope we can hope we can, hope we can even find just like a slug. Obviously, fairy seer off the top would be the nut. Another swamp, All right? We'll go ahead and just lead on the swamps though, since we have the file in our hand. Swamp, swamp from the opponent, who has a slug of their own. Okay. Can't get too much information from that yet, as we find another one of our amazing ninjutsu creatures. I guess the hope is here that they don't have a way to uh, <laughs> evolve their slug, so I could just defile it. Opponent could be on ninjas themselves if they're running Changeling Outcast. I don't think I'm going to defile quite yet. That would have been very good to have last turn. Okay, so they are going to be on ninjas then is my guess. And I'm not going to kill the Outcast. Um... I'm going to let it ninjutsu here, if they had it, because Defile on 3 kills all ninjas except for the Fallen Shinobi. As we draw yet another Swamp. So we'll go ahead and attack in. I'm going to go for the Shinobi ninjutsu first, as that's going to give us an extra creature if the shinobi lives that we can ninjutsu off of. The 1-1 one -one flyer, that is. All right, and it connected, so that's really good for us. Whenever you connect, connect with the Moonblade shinobi, it just always feels so good getting, getting that free 1-1 one -one value. All right, and they're leaving back their slug. That's nice. Okay, no ninjutsu again. So I could just go for defile on their slug now. Which is what I think I'm going to do. And then I'm going to play out the slug. And I'm going to go to combat. The question is, do I want to ninjutsu in the infiltrator? And I think the answer is yes. It's a little bit awkward because now I level up the slug before the 1-1 one -one comes out. So the slug is just going to be a 1-4 instead of a 2-5. But drawing two cards and making a 1-1 one -one flyer seems amazing here. And the, yeah, the opponent just scoops. All right. So I have, I believe, an Umazawa's Charm in my sideboard that normally comes in. Versus opposing Nindras. Can probably bring in a second string of disappearances as well if I would like. I don't think I need the Phantasmal form as much. And I think I can probably cut one of the rank officers for, say, that charm. Because we're on the draw, I think I have to play a little bit more defensively. So let's submit it like this and uh, go to game two. Okay, game two of the first round. And our hand is insane. Four lands is a little bit much, but turn one Fairy Seer and then turn two Slug or Infer Infiltrator is just basically the dream here. Oh man, a second Fairy Seer even? Yeah, this is nuts. Got a bottom, the Swamp, top the String of Disappearances. I guess I should be fetching before I do all of this scrying, but oh well. So I have the option here of ninjutsuing in the infiltrator if I want to, or just resolving the slug. I think resolving the slug is probably safer. It's better versus like a um, 
Diabolic Edict. It also gets the Slug online, so I can just start growing it immediately. So now next turn, what I can do is play the Fairy Seer, make the Slug a 1-4, attack with this Fairy Seer, Ninjutsu and the Infiltrator, and then make it a 2-5 immediately. I guess they could get like a Mastercore here would be annoying. Oh, Amorphous Axe ain't going to cut it. Yeah, this game is basically over now. So we actually want to get a Swamp with that, which means I'm not going to pop it off this turn. Because I have two blue worth of stuff to do. So let's play the Fairy Seer. Let's top the Smoke Shroud, evolve the Slug. Play the Island. Attack with both the Slug and the Seer. They can't block either. Uh, this has Menace, my friend. And then we Ninjutsu in off of the Fairy Seer, make the Slug a 2-5. We deal them 4 and we draw a card. Holy moly. This is disgusting. I almost feel bad. Almost. Sadistic Obsession. That is a good sideboard card versus ninjas, but unfortunately for the opponent, they just get browned the F out here. We're going to go Defile their Tribute Mage, and that's probably just going to prompt a scoop, in all honesty. I mean, what are they going to do? Like, Not only am I 2 for wanting them here, I'm hitting them for 5, I'm drawing an extra card, and little do they know, I'm also going to play out Slug into Fairy Seer. Like, ugh. <laughs> just absolutely backbreaking. Let's go to the second round. Okay, here's round <clears throat> Excuse me, 2 of this Modern Horizons draft. We're on the draw. And this is just a mulligan for me. I do have a Defile, but not having anything to do on turn 1 or turn 2 is basically the worst. Ugh, this is close. This is definitely close. But I think we just have to ship down to 5. Alright, certainly better here. Pitch the Phantasmal Form. And the rank officer. Not the best five we could have gotten, but good enough. We have a slug at the very least, which is what we wanted. Something to do on turn two. And we have the mana to actually like smoke shaper on turn three if we want. I kite's not a terrible draw either. So I guess here what I'm going to do is go for the slug first. Then play I kite, evolve the slug, attack for one, and then we can ninjutsu off of the I kite. Seems better. Ooh! I take that back. And the opponent's on not double white, so... I'm just going to snap this off right here. And get that extra card draw. Try to undo this... Uh, Undo this mulligan. Oh, I shouldn't have played my land pre-combat because I drew that. I should be holding open Defile right this turn. Expecting some, like, trumpeting herd business. Yep, that's exactly what it is. So now I want to draw Smoke Shroud. Moonblade Shinobi. All right, let's go Slug into I Kite. If I attack, they block. I'm forced to use Defile. I think we just want to wait until we uh, find a third black source. I'm hoping that the Infiltrator doesn't get like swiped or settled beyond reality. Oh, Conifer Worm is also a very good card, and they have three Snow Permanents right now. Yikes. So we need to find, like, one of our... Actually, I guess it's, what, Choking Tethers, and I only have one string of Disappearances in the deck. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's attack with the Eye Kite. I'm going to Ninjutsu in the Moonblade Shinobi. It's going to make a 1-1 one -one Flyer as well as drawing us a card.
Okay, there's a third swamp. It's not awful. So I can pump this to a 7-7 seven, seven currently. Pretty sure we're just taking this hit. And if they want to spend their whole turn pumping to deal 7 damage, I think we're okay with that. Deep Forest Hermit now too. Yikes. Okay. That's another pretty scary card. Um, I'm going to hold the Defile for now. So let's attack with the Illusion and the Shinobi. And what's going to happen is they're going to block the Shinobi. We get to Smoke Shaper out, give it Indestructible. If they block with a Squirrel, I'm going to just uh, Defile the... Uh, sorry, I'm going to... No, no, this is better. Save the defile. Draw a card off of the smoke shaper. Drew another slug. All right, slug in the fairy seer, I guess. Bottom the island, top the throat seeker. <sighs> Hoping to fade the ephemerate now, or settle beyond reality. Three, four, five, six, seven. All right, no blocks. Let's see if they want to pump up for three. Oh, I guess it would be for four. I'm sorry, because the conifer worm itself. I miscounted there. Nice. Who spring bloom druid? Okay, so I need to find a swamp after the throat seeker. Is what I think needs to happen here. Let's see how we play this turn. This is definitely attacking. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, four, five. So they can make this a 14, 14. So let's attack with both of these. And boy, howdy, do we want to draw a swamp real bad. Swamp, and I think we win the game. Oh, we did it, baby. Let's just pop this off and cast the uh, Defile now. All right, and now we're looking very good. bunch of three six slugs <laughs> this is funny the card i'm most worried about now is settle beyond reality answered prayers mm, a little bit too late and now they are hellbent perfect so that means their deep forest hermit is going to die for sure next turn Ooh, factor fiction All right, so let's factor fiction here right off the bat. And yeah, keeping the file seems good. Um, 
do we have very many good attacks? I think we do. I think we have great attacks, as it were. The only problem with making this attack right now is that their Deep Forest Hermit is dying next turn, so I am giving them a little bit of value with their Squirrels. But I think that's okay. Because both of our Slugs have Menace, it's just making it gonna, it's gonna make it so hard for them to, to profitably block everything. Like, right here, I don't mind doing all of this trading. As it stands, we're basically wiping their board, and we're going to be left with a bunch of fat creatures. Now I have to consider, like, what can I lose to at this point? And something that I could lose to is, like, Winds of Abandon. So let's pass priority here. Let's let all of these trades happen. I think I like playing the Fairy Seer just to set up my draws next turn. Oh, those are both great cards. I'm going to top, top, and then pass. No reason to run out the Ikite. Like, the only card the opponent has in their hand is the one they drew. They can make some bears here if they want. Yeah, that's fine. Trumpeting heard last card. All right, so let's... Wait, actually... They're going to go to 10. I have 3, 6. Okay, so we just kill them. Choking Tethers tap down their team. GG. Ninja's gonna ninja. Ninja's gonna ninja. Got a little bit lucky there to rip the fourth forest for their Connor for Worm and Defile, but. Now you see the power of the slug. Slug life, baby. Slug life. Okay, um, let's see. Another game where I think I can cut the rank officer and bring in a bounce spell. And then we'll just run it back like that. Game two, round two. No one drop, but we have two of our two drops. Again, this particular deck doesn't have many one drops. I just have the double fairy seer. So, can't aggressively mulligan for one drops if we have two drops in our hand. But anytime we don't have something to do on turn one or turn two, I think we can pretty easy mulligan. All right, let's go ahead and fetch a swamp, play the slug. We just want to get the slugs online ASAP to start leveling them up. Ooh, good fortune. Unicorn's a nice one. Ooh, there's that rank officer too. Let's play the eye kite here. And then attack for one. I might just be using the String of Disappearances this turn. Let's see if they play like a Trumpeting Herd or something. Twin Silk Spider. Yep, definitely doing that in response. Spider is so good versus Ninjas, but we have a pretty good curve out as is. And what I can do here, I can Rank Officer pitch the Smoke Shroud. Make sure I stack the triggers to where I make the 2-2. Two, two. So now my slug is a 3-6. And now I can just like cast out the smoke, uh, rather the uh, Throat Seeker, and that'll equip the Smoke Shroud to it immediately. There's that Conifer Worm again, all right. 
We found another string of disappearances. Pretty good. All right, let's play the Throat Seeker. Let's make it a 4-3. Don't think I want to attack with the Slug. I could force them to triple block and then I could like string, but I'd only kill one of their spiders. Or what I could do is like they triple block, I bounce the token, kill the, the spider, but then they're still left with the Coniform. I think we want to hold this for their fatty. Let's see, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we can almost go for a turn where we just tap down their team and then bash in and kill them. Pretty close to that point. Oh, this is going to be a pretty nice turn. Block with the slug in the 2-2. Two, two. I guess I should have triple blocked to to bait them. But either way, I think they'll, they'll be pumping here. And then we just get them with the string. Pretty good. Backbreaking, that's like time walking them. Okay. Oh, they have a Eula. Nice. So, how do we want to play this? So, if I choking tethers, I, I hit him down to three. Hmm. I think we wait here. I think we attack like this. We don't care if the zombie trades away with just one of the one twos. We kind of just want to get the spider off the board. Okay, and we're going to kill the actual spider so they can't like ephemerate it or whatever. Get the opponent down to nine. And then pass and set up for choking tethers next turn. So they have Unicorn and Conifer Worm as two of the four cards in their hand. Alright, well that is in fact a bear. So that can trade away with my Throat Seeker. But now that uh, Throat Seeker's in my graveyard, I can end of turn rank officer for two points of damage. So if they just play Conifer Worm here, we have the win. Perfect. Okay, so now we eat the Throat Seeker, put them down to seven, and then Choking Tethers hit them for seven. Bingo, bingo, bongo. Ninjas always win. Or maybe slugs always win. I don't know. <laughs> None of these are actually ninjas, but the point still stands. Pretty quick and easy. 2-0. All right, let's see if we can convert into a trophy. Let's head off to round number three. All right, here we are for the finals of this Modern Horizons draft. We're on the draw with a turn two slug, so... Gotta keep it. Turn two slug. Turn three venomous changeling or something seems okay. Opponent on the red green lands deck. I do like that deck. I don't think it's as good as ninjas, but it certainly can do some business. Question is, do I block here if they attack? Runs into like lava dart. Lava Dart, Firebolt, Elvish Fury. But they just have Squirrel Nest. All right, that is fine by me. So let's play out Venomous Changeling. Evolve the Slug and Bash in for one. Bellowing Elk. If we can hit a Swamp for that, that'd be pretty good. Ooh, 
Rank officer is also kind of decent here. Hmm. So if I want to attack first, they could double block the gluttonous slug, but then I flash in smoke shaper. I think what I like doing is attacking with both and then playing rank officer post combat because I don't think they're going to be blocking. Even though this looks awkward on the surface of it, I think it's correct because if I just play the rank officer pre combat, they know they can double block because it's only a 3 6. Okay, cycle of the quake foot cyclops. Probably make the zombie unable to block so that I can't trade with the Ruination Rioter. I think if the Rioter attacks, I trade with the Rank Officer. Yeah, I'm going to make that trade for sure. Okay. They decided against it, and they just firebolted the Rank Officer instead. We're still just looking for a second swamp, so I can go ahead and make that play. Because right now with the Squirrel Nest Bellowing Elk, I don't really have a great attack. So let's just play the Eye Kite and I think pass. Okay, Trumpeting Herd. This attack doesn't do anything because I have a 3 6. Ooh, Moonblade Shinobi was a decent draw. Alright, so. I think we get to attack like this now. Yep. And then we'll ninjutsu in off of the eye kite. Oh! Even better. I guess I get to kill these two instead of the 3-3. Three, three. Interesting. Yeah, I think I like killing the 2-2 two, two and the 1-1 one, one over the 3-3 three, three here. And then replaying the eye kite. They do get to attack me with the Bellowing Elk this turn, as I don't have the 3-6, but... I guess the card I'm most worried about is, like, the Marasa Behemoth, and them getting a land in their graveyard to make an 8-8. Looks like another matchup where another string of disappearances is going to be good. All right, Firebolt flashback, kill the flyer, yes. No attacks. Another good turn to draw a second swamp here. Or another slug life. Okay. Well, I think we're just attacking with these two. Would be a little bit surprised if they block the changeling, but they might just to prevent any ninjutsu shenanigans. All right, so we'll let that trades happen, play out the second slug and pass. Getting their creatures off the battlefield is just good for our menace creatures in general. Still really looking for that second swamp. Once we get that second swamp, we just get to start bashing in without care. Another rank officer. That's not bad. Like, I still don't have the greatest attacks here, though. Hmm. How do we want to play this?
If I attack with the slug, they poop out a squirrel, they triple block the 3-6. That's not ideal. Not ideal. I guess I'm just going to wait. Yeah. Just wait until we find another swamp. If I draw an island, we can play out the rank officer and pitch the island, for example, but... Okay, here comes... Something nasty, I'm sure. Oh, just a wall of blossoms, whatever. Yeah, this time I'm not going to block. Because I'm going to be worried about them having a way to punch through the slug. Yeah, there it is. Igneous Elemental. Kill the 2-2. Two -two. Where's my second swamp, bro? That's not awful, I guess. Three, six, that's nine damage. They can hit me for four, eight, four, eight, nine, ten. Hmm. All right, I'm actually going to cast it. See if we draw a land here. Fairy Seer. Ooh. Oh, that's kind of tempting. Ninja is lethal next turn. I guess I go top, top. All right. Let's see, 4, 8, 9, 10, 11. They have 11 damage on me right now. I mean, I could lose to a lot of things here still. Okay, they just did have the Marasa Behemoth. Nice. So, presumably I win in the air now. They only have one green mana open. Yeah, nice. A new moon approaches, my friend. What are you at? Five? I guess I'll hit you for six. Okay. But I get Simon Nielsen here. Red, green, fat stuff. Second string in. Rank officer out. Could even bring in the second ninja of the new moon, or even like some wind color avens to cycle, but I think we'll just take out one rank and bring in the string. We really need to have one of our early drops um, in this matchup, it feels like. But I mean, this game was a lot easier if I just had found that second swamp earlier for the defile, so. Ah, nice little. Words from the opponent. Uh, we're on the draw. Can't keep this. If I had any one drop or two drop, this would be an easy keep, but... Oh, they had a flyer. Uh, so we're going to have to mulligan down to six. And this is going to be a six I have to keep, regardless of the fact that I don't have any creatures here. Going to have to pitch the string and keep the card draw effects. All right, so hoping to find a two drop next turn. Otherwise, we're just going to have to scour and hope. Would be nice if the opponent didn't do anything that this turn either. Winding way is okay, I guess. 
They named a land, they get one land. I have to double bottom these? Yikes. <laughs> oh, a ninja deck that doesn't play anything before turn three. Nope, before turn four. Oh, yikes. Not good. Three one ones, my gosh. Well, this is the saddest. Play a three three and hope they don't kill it. Okay. Hmm. So I think I kind of like defiling their rhyme tender here since they're missing lands and then just passing with Foth and two tricks available. Although I guess Phantasmal Form is not really a trick in this scenario. So this is okay because they have the uh, forest in their graveyard to ping. So I think we'll just take the hit for two. See what they do. Land pass. All right, we will foth. Probably going to take whatever pile has Shinobi, depending on how it gets split. Uh, yeah, I think we definitely take the top pile here. It sucks to lose these, but if I take the top pile, I can... Uh, I can... Uh, smoke the Azra. Okay, that's fine. Smoke Shard going to the graveyard is not a big deal since it would still gain the smoke, or yeah, it'll still go on top of the Shinobi if nothing else. They have like a Firebolt. Hmm. They're selling me on Firebolt, but I'll go ahead and make the block. If they have it, they have it. Oh, of course, Igneous Elemental. Oh, God, why didn't I think of that one? That was really stupid. That should have been obvious. Okay, not a terrible draw. That becomes a 2-4 Death Toucher. I guess I block Igneous here. And what I can do is Phantasmal Form to make it a 3-3 so that it doesn't trade with my Changeling. Another Elephant, yes. So we'll Scour next turn. We have way too many lands here. Oh my. Bottom, bottom. Slug. Yeah. Just didn't have enough to do in the early game here. First play on turn first creature play on turn four is basically the opposite of what ninjas needs. And a scale up! Oh my gosh. Alright. I would take exactly twelve there. I can block, block, bounce, and then still take two creature hits, which would be 12 damage. Okay, going to game three. Yeah, I, I just need to mulligan to a better hand, I guess, or draw better. We had turn two scour, but it didn't find us anything to do until turn four still, so... 
We're hoping to have turn one Fairy Seer is the nuts, but I would also accept turn two Slug or turn two Ikite. All right, here we go for game three of the final round. We're going to be on the play. Oh, no. Oh, I think I keep with the scry, but man, this is this is risky. We didn't see any lava darts from the opponent, but if, if for example, they just have like turn one firebolt on my fairy seer, this could be very, very bad. The dream is to fairy seer scry into ingenious infiltrator and then immediately ninjutsu turn two. But Rank officer and a string of disappearances. I'm going to bottom the string. I'm going to bottom the rank officer too. I think I need to find something else to do. Okay, forest means they don't kill my seer. Smoke shroud's actually fine. Because once they do kill the fairy seer, if I just draw any other ninja, it'll regain the flying, so... Yeah, this is where it becomes an issue if I don't find something to do next turn. If I just draw another land, for example, next turn, really bad. They might just have an Urza's Rage here. <laughs> well, that's kind of funny. I guess we'll take it. Oh my lord, bottom, bottom. So a play I can make if I really need to is, uh, oh, that's terrifying. Is uh, I can string of disappearances my own creature. And then uh, string of disappearances their creature. Jeez Louise. Well, I don't want to even use the Prismatic Vista, and the reason is I've already scryed a bunch of lands to the bottom. So it looks like they're probably going to Urza's Rage me, I would guess, is why they didn't attack with a Rhyme Tender. No, they didn't. Yeah, this is Urza's Rage, and then hopefully Ping with the Vengeful Devil is my guess. So we're going to string our own fairy in response and then copy it and bounce their rhyme tender. Okay. All right, that means they're not killing our fairy. Ninja? No ninja. Come on, deck. I don't think we keep those. Those don't do anything at this point in the game. Need to find... Oh, I guess... Shoot. I guess the Throat Seeker was a 4-3 lifelinking flyer. That was actually relevant. I just figured I need to find a ninjutsu creature, though. Or a card draw effect. Oh god, here comes the Marasa. Alright, this is the turn. We need to find something good. That's amazing. Wow, okay. That's amazing. Beautiful. Attack with all. No blocks. Ninjutsu. Get the Smoke Shroud. This bashes them for five. I draw a card. Now we play the Fairy. And top the choking tethers. All right, we're right back in this. Woo! In fact, we have a very likely win next turn if all things go right. Perfect. That was an amazing draw. No blocks from me. Take my seven. Land. They just have the... Uh... Ah, that's pretty good. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So they're going to sack their Rhyme Tender to give their Bogarden flying and then ping with the Devil. 
but what I just get to do is attack with everything. This forces action now. I then get to choking tethers the Bogarden. And then I can just ninjutsu on one of the other creatures. Woo, we did it. Scary, but we managed to pull it off. And I don't need nin ninjutsu or anything because we just have lethal as is. Might as well. <laughs> Yay, we 3 0 And that's why you play ninjas. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Modern Horizons is a great flashback format. Oh, as you can see, we're in the player status there. Let's see. Up to nine trophies now, the majority of them being with ninjas. This format is great. Um, yeah, so hopefully you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.